you run! If you're not done with that, we got two words for ya! What's up? I believe in three things. God, the state of Texas, and Joe Hendry. Welcome, everybody, to the Two Words Podcast. And yeah, that's a Joe Hendry. That's a TNA reference, everybody. You didn't get it, though, because you don't watch TNA. Who watches TNA out there? Send me, send me, send us a message on Facebook. Somebody. Who's keeping TNA in business? <laughs> Who who is it? Some of you are out there. You gotta exist. <laughs> it's like the people who who are keeping Swedish fish in, in Ugh, business. They're the worst. Who's doing that? Why do people like that? Who is doing that? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know <laughs> is that we've got a great show today because this is our what's it? Our third, fourth going home show. Um, third, I think. Yeah, it's our third. Third, right. going home three. Um, we have uh, we're we're getting ready for WrestleMania. We're almost there. Uh, this is our last show before WrestleMania, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah. is this is which is why we're doing this. But <laughs> what other time would we do it? <laughs> anyway, um, and so we're going to be talking about it, talking about that. We've got a fun trivia game. But first, hey yo, is MJF heading to WWE? We're not sure, but here's what we do know. There have been talks about MJF's future ever since his contract expired on January 1st. Uh, Friedman was apparently removed from the roster page shortly following his loss to Samoa Joe at World's End back in December. But fans have now noticed that MJF's merchandise has been removed from the AEW shop, furthering speculation that he might be moving over to WWE. However, I think it's a ruse. The, I think it's I, a game. Seen, yeah, I've seen this back and forth. And I understand the idea of it being a work, but it's also kind of bad, a bad uh, money move to take off say, his merch. Yeah. Okay, let's not sell his merch. Yeah. So here's why I think it's a ruse, though. I have a very specific reason. All right, hit me. So if you go to the AEW merchandise shop uh -huh. and you type in... John Cena's name. It's going to pop up with a thing. It's going to be like, you know, we didn't find anything. Could this have been what you were looking for? Maybe these names. Could it be, you know, John Silvers or, you know, whoever. Um, if, you, if you do that with most of them, if you type in MJF or Maxwell Jacob Freeman, it comes up with a specially designed AEW 404 not found logo. Oh, that does not pop up when you look up anything else. That's interesting. So. That's very interesting. Yeah. But here's the deal. <laughs> this is like the second or third time they've done this with MJF. Right. If that's the case. Now, what it also could be is they're very, very upset with Maxwell Jacob Freeman. And they don't, they don't want to see it. They don't want to, they don't, they don't, they're, they're angry with him. Maybe. Um, that could be it. I doubt it though. He's made the company more money than most people. Probably. A lot. Yeah. 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 He's, he's one of the bigger yeah. draws for sure. I can't imagine. I can't even get to the store. I won't load it. <laughs> I want to, I want to see it for myself. You got to see it for yourself. It's, um, anyway, yeah, we'll look it up later. <clears throat> But, uh, but yeah, so I don't know, would you, the question though always arises, would you want to see MJF in WWE? I think if he were to come over, given what we think is going to happen at WrestleMania, now would be the time. Because if Cody Rhodes does come out ahead, 
And Roman Reigns takes his six months off or whatever he's mm-hmm. going to take once he finally drops the belt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's a better surprise first feud, first heel, than the, the guy from rain- the former company? The, the longest, the longest reigning, reigning AEW champion? That would be... I mean, imagine ending WrestleMania with that. Oh, it's a huge pop. Yeah. My no, it's, gosh. It's, but it's big. I don't think it's going to happen. I just don't. Not this don't, year, anyway. I don't see it happening. <laughs> I don't see it happening. Um, Would be really cool. I'm just, I'm just not seeing that. <laughs> well, hey, yo, Carmelo Hayes and possibly Trick Williams are heading to the main roster this summer. Uh, rumors surrounding call ups for both the stars have abounded for months. A uh, report from Fightful Select states that Carmelo Hayes is expected to join the main roster during the summer with plans for his call-up having been discussed prior to the Royal Rumble. Um, Williams, not as concrete, but WWE management were really impressed with his uh, reception when he showed up on SmackDown mm-hmm. in Carmelo Hayes' corner. Yeah. Like, he wasn't even there as the competitor, and the crowd was really into him being mm-hmm. there. And they have... Hyped his catchphrase a couple times, even with him not being there on SmackDown. Yeah. Pump the, what is it? Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, word is after Stand and Deliver, where they're going to be having their big match against each other, they might continue that feud up into the main roster. At least that is the idea that some in WWE have pitched. But either way, Hayes is coming Yeah, in summer. Williams might come along with him. Yeah. I think that's... I've always thought that was the way to do it, though. When uh, when they were talking about bringing uh, Aleister Black up to the main roster, mm-hmm. he, was, he had just gotten done off of this crap hot... Uh, uh, story feud with um, is that a positive term? Yes. Crap hot. All right. <laughs> this just <laughs> just because how hot? Pure hot. I mean, spe- hot as crap. We 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 came out of that. We came out of that uh, that one chip challenge. You know what I mean? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Crap hot. Good. Hot crap. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Crap hot. Good. Hot snake. Uh, hot snakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when it comes out and it's hot snakes. Um, where were we going? When Alistair Bla- <laughs> Alistair Black uh, had a really good feud with Velveteen Dream right there. At the oh end of, yeah, uh, yeah. At, at NXT, and I always thought it would have been great to just continue that over, and then both of them would get heat without having to start something new with another mm-hmm. wrestler. Like you, that's the way to get him over. And it's an easy, opinion. it's an easy jump to hype. Like for here, you could hype Carmelo Hayes is coming to SmackDown. Yeah, you know, with for a couple weeks, throw it up there. Carmelo Hayes moves to SmackDown this date. He comes in, he gives his big opening promo, and then Trick Williams music plays as well. That's exactly Thought it. You could get away. This isn't. This go. isn't hard. And it would. That, that no <laughs> more story needed to bump this yeah. in and like okay, and we're here now. Yeah, and everyone would be fine with it. Yeah, that was the thing that I had um, always thought about. Again, back with the with the with Alistair Black yeah. Velveteen Dream thing, yeah. they had done this whole thing where Velveteen Dream was like, "I'm gonna make you say my name," and he was like wearing like his face. He was doing the Rick Rude, wearing his opponent's face on his pants and mm. all this other stuff. Yeah, and I was and like at the end of that, Alistair Black came on top and then went to the main roster. I always thought it would have been great. Like Velveteen Dream just comes out and is like, "You never said my name." <laughs> you got to yeah and like that would have just simple been, easy we're right into it uncomplicated we're right into it uh hey yo cm punk is going on commentary where we wanted him in the first place yeah we've always wanted him uh the self-proclaimed second city saint showed up on the march 25th edition of raw to trash talk everyone trash talk everyone <laughs> <laughs> trash talk Every Everyone. One. Um, and then let us know that he will be on commentary for the World Heavyweight Championship match between Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. And when I say he, had, like I said, he attacked everybody. <laughs> he attacked Pat McAfee. He attacked Jim Cornette. 
at one point, the best part of the whole thing was when Drew McIntyre came out and said, I'm the chosen one. And CM Punk went, who, do, who told you that? <laughs> who gave you that name? Can you say the name of the, of the, the paragon of virtue that gave you that name? <laughs> Come on. And it was, it was the best. It was awesome. Um, I, I wouldn't mind him being on commentary for one of the, for an entire one of the first or second nights. Yeah. Not just a single match. I mean, yeah. he's, he's, he'd be good on commentary for he'd sure. Be, he'd be great. I always loved, uh, <clears throat> I loved the episode of raw after everyone walked out. Like all the employees walked out except for Triple H, John Cena, Sheamus, and CM Punk. That's right. And Triple H came out and was like, you know, you he, he's like Sheamus, John Cena, you guys are gonna fight. I'll be a referee and CM Punk. I got a table over there full of pipe bomb and a microphone. You say whatever you want. You're like, can I wear your jacket? And he goes, That's right. You can even wear my jacket. <laughs> I'm in. I'm like. <laughs> That was a weird episode. And then he was making a whole bunch of like Bobcat Goldthwait references mm-hmm. and like <laughs> Oh, it was it was it was the best. But I'm very excited for that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh hey yo, the reason why Bray Wyatt isn't planned for the Hall of Fame this year has been revealed. Okay. Uh WWE announced possibly uh, all of the Hall of Fame inductees this year, I believe. Um I think so. including Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda. Uh, of the U.S. Express. It was reported over the last week that Wyatt was in the original plans for WWE's Hall of Fame this year. Uh, However, those plans changed. Uh, Dave Meltzer uh, of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter said the reason for this is due to the upcoming documentary on Peacock, which comes out April 1st, uh, Bray Wyatt becoming immortal. Uh, It seems to indicate WWE would rather take their time when it comes to paying respects to Bray Wyatt. So this year, documentary, possibly next year, Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Uh, But instead of cramming it all in at once and then it being like, okay, and we're done. Yeah. You know, they want to give him a longer time out thing. And you got to expect that a lot of the stories or discussion that you might have at the Hall of Fame about Bray Wyatt are already have going to be in Mm -hmm. the documentary. Yeah. And so having them that close together might be might feel a little repetitive and thus make the Hall of Fame ceremony feel a little underwhelming. Yeah. I get so that. pushing it I think is okay. I'm very excited for this documentary. Yeah. It, no, looks, it looks like it's gonna be really so good. So good. Um and, and also, I mean, if you're gonna have uh you can't have Bray Wyatt and Paul Heyman get inducted in the same year. Right. Paul Heyman does um, definitely deserve his spot. And and he deserves it. And and I think it's going to be great. Um and but then it's like it's a weird class though. Cuz it it's cuz it's like Paul Heyman and the US Express I can't name another person. <laughs> I can't remember anybody else. <laughs> I know there was there was a lady. There was a Japanese lady, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's it feels a little yeah. bit like the B team list of Hall of Fame. Yeah, this year, it's they which is probably be, yeah. unfair because I don't know. Yeah, just because I don't know them doesn't mean that they don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I mean, maybe though, you know. But uh, Paul Heyman, I mean, I'm very much looking forward to his induction. Oh yeah, I can't. Uh, I mean, there's so many ways they can go with this. So many people they could bring in. How have they know? How have they have they decided? Or announced who's gonna? I don't think so. Gonna Not them? that I've seen. It's probably Tommy Dreamer. That'd be a good choice. No, Tommy Dreamer works for TNA though. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> they got a good relationship with TNA. It could be Tommy. Dreamer, so. No, no, <laughs> it's not TNA. <laughs> we are not giving TNA one cent. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, th- I think it'd be, I think it'd be good. Um, uh, well, uh, hey yo. <laughs> Goldberg seems to have some sour grapes. Uh, Goldberg was on a recent episode of uh, I didn't put the name of the podcast. Of somebody's podcast. He was on it, it, it was like No More Talk podcast or something, which I feel is aptly named because <laughs> one of the hosts um, has like a, a tracheotomy in. And so, like, he types on a computer all of his words. Oh. And, like, that's – it's very – I mean, it was it was good. It was cool. 
Um, it's kind of a cool show, good, cool format. Anyway, Goldberg was on s- this podcast that um, is is fantastic, and you should go listen to it, uh, where he talked about everything from his working relationship with Triple H, which was bad, <laughs> uh, and then went on to discuss some Japanese girl beating his streak. Uh, he is quite. He talked about how Triple H had said some like not so nice things about him while they were working for competing companies. And it's like, mm. obviously that's going to happen. Yeah, of course. Um, and then he went on to discuss how the WWE treated him. Uh, and he said, well, a girl beat my winning streak. Uh, Asuka is her name. That's what he yeah. said. Uh, <laughs> some, Asuka. some Japanese, he just kept saying some Japanese girls, if it was going to get better. Um, every time he said it, he said they touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. And it just so happened that that culminated when I got there. And then it just so happened that every single wrestler uses a spear in their moves, right? Ironic that happened when I got there. So that's how they do it. It's like, number one, the spear is a great move and anybody can pull it off. That's why they gave it to you, Bill Goldberg. (laughs) Cause anybody can do the spear. Mm -hmm. Even you. (laughs) Secondly, your win streak is fake. <laughs> it went from 112 to 173 in one week. One week. It was daytime. I mean, <laughs> telling you, dude. Like, and he's just got this, like, and if you watch the clip, he's just got this, like, look on his face, like, he's just, you know, I don't know. He, it, I, King of wrestling. Oh, yeah. And again, it's, it's, <laughs> again, we go back to this Ryback thing where it's like, well, obviously, everybody loves me. <laughs> so I can't be the problem. I can't be the problem. <laughs> it's like, like, I'm sorry that they had some Japanese girl <laughs> beat your fake winning streak. But, like, you don't look like the bigger man here. <laughs> All right. My last one. Hey, yo. This is about the Two Words Podcast. Oh. We want to let you know that the Two Words Podcast is now also streaming on the Glue Network, G-L-U, which is together. a streaming platform available on Roku and smart TVs, as well as a new iPhone and Android app. Uh, Glue exists to unlock inspirational value of faith-centric programming, partnering with Christian content creators like Love Thy Nerd and Two Words. LTN is proud to join our friends uh, God Squad Church and Unity Gaming as the first group of nerd culture channels on the platform. Uh, You can download the Glue Network app today. Again, that's G-L-U. And just search for Love Thy Nerd. You'll find all of our stuff. You should do it. Is it it video or is it just Yeah, video. Roku, man. Smart TVs. I'm on Roku. They could be watching us there right now. Mm, Mama, your baby boy made it (laughs) to Roku. I did it. I'm on the road. I'm on the road. I'm going to tell my, I'm going to, I'm going to show my daughter that and she's going to lose her mind (laughs) that, that daddy and Mr. Matt were on, on TV. It's going to be great. My, okay. So before we get into our next segment, um, my daughter, I have taught her. And now she will not stop walking around the house going, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she does it all day. It's fantastic. And we just yell it across the house now. And I go, <laughs> yeah. And she goes, you. <laughs> and she does like a real fake deep. You. It is the most adorable thing. Um, I have also taught her uh, that when she gets excited to say pop, pop. Nice. So, uh, I'm I'm keeping I'm keeping it together for all you guys out there. Steal both of those ideas. I think I am. You should. (laughs) You should. Everybody should be doing it. We just need a. We just need the next generation of toddlers just showing up to daycare. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, it'd be the best. Um, Well, moving on, we have some WrestleMania trivia. Yeah. Because we're coming up on WrestleMania. And so, uh, Matt, you found a a, a fun... found a a multiple choice quiz. Okay. Uh, This quiz is... It's like 35 questions. So we can cut down however many you want each of us to do. Okay. And do that best of. um, Which I should probably get a... That pencil that's right there. Just so I can keep track of our 
scores because it's not like the other thing. <clears throat> All right. Um, you want to do just 10 each? Let's do 10 each. 10 each. Sounds like okay. a good, good long format. Uh, you want to do rock, paper, scissors? So he goes first. We can do it. We can All do right. it. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yep. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, yeah. okay. You answering or asking? I guess that's what I will you choose. I will answer. Answer first. Okay. Because I'm hoping you pick the easy questions first. Probably so. Down into the... Well, the first one looks really easy. All right, John. Who started WrestleMania? Vince McMahon, Kurt Angle, Terry Boella, 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 or Steve Anderson, Steven Anderson. I need to make this big so I can't read it. So number one, um, it's Balea. Balea. Thank you. (laughs) I knew it was something like that. Uh, isn't Steven Anderson the uh, the independent Baptist preacher that yells at people for not wearing button-up shirts and having hair that's too long? Um, there's a lot of those guys. Not probably. reading out of the KJV, <laughs> that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go with Vince McMahon. Say sure. his name. Are you sure? Are you positive? I'm pretty sure. Mm. Nice. A bad look, I did, John. I did it. You can just <laughs> scroll through and find random questions if you want. I'll let you do that. Uh, okay. Well, no, it won't let me. I got to go in order. Oh, okay. The way this one works. Okay. Uh, all right. In WrestleMania 1, Hulk Hogan teamed up with whom to face Paul Ordna- Orndorf? Orndorf? Orndorf. Or- and Roddy Piper. That's spelled wrong, isn't it? Isn't it Might one? be. I don't remember. Andre the Giant, Mr. T, The Undertaker, or Stone Cold Steve Austin? Uh, I pity the fool that doesn't know it's Mr. T. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) During WrestleMania 2, Hulk Hogan and King Kong Bundy competed in what kind of match? A ladder match, a tag team match, a seal cage match, or a tables match? Um, I believe it was a steel cage match. It was when they had the blue one. Correct. Wouldn't have been a ladder match. Ladder matches weren't invented yet. And I don't think table matches were invented yet. That's true. <sighs> Who did Hulk Hogan face at WrestleMania 3? His third year leading the main event. The Undertaker, The Rock, Macho Man Randy Savage, or Andre the Giant? Uh, I'll go with Andre the Giant. It was when he slammed that big stinky Frenchman. <laughs> Correct. All right. Number five, a tournament was held in WrestleMania four for what? A cash prize, the undisputed WWF Heavyweight Championship, the WWE Trophy, or the WWF Tag Team Championship? I honestly do not know the answer to this question. <laughs> um, because the undisputed WWF Championship didn't exist. Because the, the titles hadn't been unified until Chris Jericho did it. Was that the first time it was ever? I thought it was. They've had random trophies all throughout the time, but that's a WWE. That is true. That is true. But that might not mean anything. I'm going to. This is kind of a hard. This is kind of a hard question. It's, It's between the tag championships and the undisputed championships. I feel like. Gonna need an answer, John. I'm gonna go with the undisputed WWF Heavyweight Championship. Dang. Hey. Yeah, I ended with uh, Randy Savage feeding Ted DiBiase. These two would meet again, SummerSlam. Okay. It felt like nobody cared about tag wrestling back then, so. I guess. <laughs> All right. Where was the first WrestleMania held? Caesar's Palace. Los Angeles Sports Arena, Rosemont Horizon, or Madison Square Garden? We'll go with uh, Madison Square Garden. Gosh darn it. Jeff. If you get a whole bunch of questions that are hard, I'll do another They're 10 questions. They're going to be all difficult. I'll do, I'll do another 10 <clears throat> questions. I'll do it. What was the title of the main event of WrestleMania Five? fought between Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage? The Ultimate Challenge? The Mega Powers Explode? Big Time? Or Heat? <laughs> Um, I, I, gosh, I don't know. This, that's actually, it's kind of harder. Uh, I'm going to go with the mega powers explode. Cause that would make Jeez, sense. Yes. Goodness gracious. I'm really good at trivia. That seems y'all. more like a tagline than a title. Yeah. When was the first WrestleMania? Oh, 
1985. Yeah, they did not make I... that one difficult. <laughs> 85. Give me a bunch of 80s. <clears throat> All right. Who was known for... <sighs> For the just skip this question. We're not doing. They're not doing that one. Uh, when was the Undertaker's first match at WrestleMania? WrestleMania five, six, oh. seven, or eight? This one I do not know. He was around a while. Seven. He did. He was. Uh... It was the giant Gonzalez that he wrestled. Mm. I'm gonna go with six. And I think he and I'll even I'll even add that I think he wrestled Jimmy Superfly Snooker. No, oh, it was seven was that he seven? defeated Jimmy Snooker by pinfall. Oh man. So it must have been eight that he was It would have had, yeah, it would have had to have been Gonzalez. Okay, finally got a wrong answer. <laughs> Sheesh. Let's skip this one, too. Who broke the Undertaker's streak? Yeah. Goodness <laughs> gracious. What title did the Ultimate Warrior hold going into WrestleMania six against Hulk Hogan? The WWF World Heavyweight Championship, WWF Intercontinental, WWF Tag Team, or WWF Cruiserweight? They didn't have a Cruiserweight Championship, and even if they did, neither one of them qualified. <laughs> um... Uh, I believe that was the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. And this was the ultimate challenge. Wow. Okay. They titled matches. All right. You got nine out of ten, John. Okay. All right. Okay. So so I will, I will again, I'll say this. If, if you just get like garbage. just stupid ridiculous, I'll do another ten. All right. <laughs> All right. Matt. Who lost to Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 7 while trying to defend the WWF World Heavyweight Championship? Was it Sergeant Slaughter, The Rock, Greg Valentine, or The Ultimate Warrior? WrestleMania 7. Is this Sergeant Slaughter? This is already so much I harder. Is, I think this is Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One in the books. Yeah. WrestleMania 8 featured two main events, but who was not part of either one of them? This is a oh. garbage question. Oh, well, no, it's an easy one. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> who was not a part of the main event at WrestleMania 8? Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Randy Savage, or John Cena? We'll let this easier one slide because you got the Vince McMahon one at the beginning. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> John Cena. You couldn't see him at that event. Man, that's funny. Dur <laughs> During an impromptu match at WrestleMania 9. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Roman numerals. I know how to read. Uh, Hulk Hogan defeated whom in under 30 seconds? Was it the Ultimate Warrior? Was it Ric Flair? Was it Jake Roberts or was it Yokozuna? I feel like this is much later than I thought it was. I thought this was an, an earlier WrestleMania, but this would be Yokozuna, right? Yokozuna? Yeah. Because hey. he just won it. And Hulk Hogan's like, hey, brother, I want that. Hi, that's mine. <laughs> Who was the guest referee when Bret Hart defeated Yokozuna at WrestleMania 10? This feels like it's pretty easy. Was it Roddy Piper, uh, Kane, Triple H, or Vince McMahon? Yeah. It'd have to be Roddy Piper, right? I can't imagine it would be anybody else. Yeah. Why are they doing this? Why are this they putting weird. three obvious not answers on any of these? <coughs> which former oh, gosh. <laughs> which former star football player for the New York Giants competed in WrestleMania 11? Was it Michael Strahan? Was it Lawrence Taylor? Was it Frank Gifford? Or was it Sam Huff? This is going to be the one that I miss. Yeah. <laughs> 
like not Michael Strahan, right? Michael Strahan's too recent for that, isn't he? For WrestleMania 11. Oh, oh, oh! I'll help you out. Yeah, sure. Grant me that, right? He's, it's, 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 it was a little late for that, or he was a little later for that. I don't know any of the other three. Do you know the other three, John? Um, I know, I know the, I know one of them. Okay, I feel a little bit better. Former f- star football player competed in WrestleMania. Frank Gifford. Dang it. it Lawrence Taylor. I almost said Lawrence Taylor, too, and I didn't. He is the only one of those. He's the only other name on there that I knew. (laughs) Okay. What was the company's first WrestleMania as WWE? Oh, (laughs) but. Was it WrestleMania 11? Was it WrestleMania 15? Was it WrestleMania 19? Or was it WrestleMania 25? Fortune has it, John, <laughs> that I just rewatched WrestleMania 17, and they were okay. still WWF then. And I can't imagine it was all the way to 25 before the Get the F Out campaign. So I'm going to say yeah. WrestleMania 19. Okay. Hey, way to go. Zing. As 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 chance would have it, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the Slumdog Millionaire of the Two Words Podcast. <laughs> at, WrestleMania, at WrestleMania 12, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart competed in a match that lasted how long? I'm pretty sure that's not the right WrestleMania. Anyway, at WrestleMania 12, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart competed in a res, in a match that lasted how long? Was it 20 minutes? 30 minutes? 45 minutes or 60 minutes. Are you thinking of the ladder match? No. Did they do an Iron Man match? I'm trying to oh, one guess why they would be picking numbers. Minutes. I'm going to say 60 minutes. I don't know if it's an Iron Man match or not, but I'm going to say 60. No. Yay. Longest match in WrestleMania history. I th- I really thought that was WrestleMania 13. Oh, no, 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 no. WrestleMania 13 was a one-match show. The only match that anybody cared about or liked was Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay. I guess I, thought, I don't know why I thought that was WrestleMania 13. <laughs> anyway, who made their debut at WrestleMania 13, speaking of? Uh, was it The Rock? Was it Stone Cold Steve Austin? Was it Kane? Was it Triple H? Made their debut? Debut. Like they first appeared? Yeah. But work your way back. Huh? What do you mean work my way back? I'm just like... Because you've already established. It wasn't Austin. I know yeah. that because Austin was in the main event. He okay. Just they, now, the, the, this is this is a very oddly worded because it could also mean their WrestleMania debut. Right. Yeah. Shoot. Was Hunter still? Uh... Oh man, I don't know. Kane? Is it Kane? I'm going to say it's Kane. Dang it, it's The Rock. Okay, so it's not their debut. Because I would have gotten that question the wrong. Mania. Man, okay. Because you know, oh, The Rock, you knocked him over. Hell. Because I was sitting there going like, okay, well, The Rock debuted at Summer at Survivor Series. Yeah. Kane debuted at In Your House. Ah, yeah. yeah and Stone Cold was already there. So I'd have said Triple H, but apparently that was wow. that would have been okay. incorrect. Well, I'll take it. That's fine. Next. <clears throat> I still probably wouldn't have guessed correctly. <laughs> Who did The Undertaker face at WrestleMania 14? Oh. Was it Stone Cold Steve Austin, Triple H, The Rock, or Kane? Was this Kane? Is this the match I'm thinking of? I'm going to say it's Kane. 
It was. That was the match I was thinking of. All right, all right, all right. Let's finish this out. I've already yeah. lost, but we got two more. Okay. Who was the guest ring enforcer for the match between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 14? Was it Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, um, Mike Tyson, or Brett Favre? It's Mike Tyson. Yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there was this, this whole thing that came out that um, between the Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight. And somebody had come out and like said that there were all these crazy rules, and one of them was that Jake could tag in his brother Logan at any time, but then he didn't have to leave the ring so they could both beat up Mike Tyson, and a bunch of people were like, that's totally true! And Jake Paul was like, not even a little bit, man. Like, <laughs> not. What? <laughs> you can't tag people in, in a box. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> In the headlining event, who did Stone Cold Steve Austin face at WrestleMania 15? Was it The Undertaker, Triple H, Kurt Angle, or The Rock? I think this is one of the trilogy with The Rock. I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering the logo correctly. Yep. You All did right. it. I did it, man. I did it. I got one more wrong than you did. <laughs> hey. That's all I needed to win. That's <laughs> all I needed. Well, you know, here's the thing though. You know this. Don't compete with me on trivia, man. <laughs> Just I am two in a row. I am useless in so many things. Yes, two in a row. Let's remind the people Cross two shows. that if you that if you want to get a little bit more, you go check out the Nerd History podcast, which debuted. This last uh, Monday. This last Monday. Yeah. Double, um, double the two words this week. It's two two words this week. Though in a different we're, format. We're taking over um, because Monday was the... Uh, Nerd History Podcast. Yeah. Where we went over the Nerd History of WCW Monday Nitro, which this week celebrates the 23rd anniversary of the final episode. Last one. So we kind of go over the we had. spectacular rise and... Spectacular fall. We, we had some thoughts. <laughs> WCW, we had okay. some thoughts. And WCW as a whole. But, well, this uh, coming up uh, April 6th, which is in like a week and a half, right? Uh, yeah. Something like that. From where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, from where we're at. Uh, but a week and a half from now, we are going to finally be at WrestleMania 40. WrestleMania XL. XL. It's an extra large. Um, it's a spreadsheet. It's Sorry, the it's a meat packing plant in Friona, Texas. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have finally made it to the showcase energy of company. the Immortals. There's an energy company. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go I'm on. sure it's like a tutoring program too. I'm sure it's got to be a tutoring program called XL. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we're making it. We've made it to the showcase of the Immortals, and uh, we've got a pretty. Interesting card. I'm actually pretty hyped about almost every single one of these. I think I think this is going to be... This is good stuff. This, this is, has potential to be the greatest WrestleMania of our generation. Oh, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. And so um, I guess we're just going to kind of go down and give our thoughts on each of these matches, the matches that we have so far. Give our kind of preliminary <laughs> predictions. Yeah. We will finalize the weekend of as we're heading Closer to... It. We'll do we'll do a prediction post on our social media, yeah. probably right before each night. Yeah, I would say because that's our right. second night predictions will probably change based on some of the first night stuff. That's very very true. Yeah. That's very very true. Um, uh, so we'll knock out some of these okay. other matches first, and then we'll get to kind of the bigger matches. Um, the Intercontinental Championship, Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Get to that one. Um, I'm I'm. I'm really good with this. Um, I don't. I don't know. I feel like every time Sami Zayn comes back, I'm already sick of him. <laughs> That's such a good way to put it. Like, <laughs> and I hate that because he's good. He's he's fantastic in the ring. Yeah, he's great on the mic. It's just every time he comes back, I don't know. I it's one of those. It feels like he's just always around. He's but he's exhausting. Yeah. He leaves for like six months at a time. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, I would, I would love to have seen, 
I don't know, because I can't really picture like who needs to be going against Gunther. I would have really loved Chad Gable. Good, I thought good they were Chad doing Gable. a good thing. I thought they were leading up to it, and I really thought he was going to be the one. I thought that would be fun. I thought Chad Gable's do at least one cool thing, because he's always been this background player, but he's been kind of that workhorse kind of guy who's... Was a, was a silver medal in the Olympics never. not enough I mean, for you, Matt Coker? <laughs> Like, let him have a run with the Intercontinental Championship yeah. and give him a big win over Gunther, oh, even he, if it's a fluke win. Yeah. He'd be so much fun as an Intercontinental Champion. He really would. It would be a good time. Love, love that. Love that. Um, uh, looking at U.S. Championship, Hold Logan on. Paul. Who do you think is going to win? Who do I think is going to win? I think yeah. Gunther retains. Yeah, I agree. I think some people might think it's Sammy's time and that he's due for something, but... the The only reason I think that Sammy would win is just like to get the belt off of Gunther. Right. But I don't feel like that's a good move at this point. No. Uh, especially since they had Sammy lose to Bronson Reed on Raw. I don't think True. him turning around and beating Gunther at WrestleMania would make sense or make Gunther look good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say Gunther as well, unless they somehow sneak Chad Gable into the match, which they, they're keeping him in the storyline for some reason. Uh, so we still have a week and a half to go. If they do that, we'll see. I'm excited. Uh, coming up with the U.S. Championship, Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens. Um and I like this match. I think I think three talented guys. I think three guys that I could have a vested interest in seeing beat up each other. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Because because Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, like they're about each other's only friends on this show, right? <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Owens is acting like little brother of. Randy Orton. Oh yeah, it's. You see what I did, Randy? See what I did? <laughs> see what I did, Randy? I punched him in the face. That was a fantastic bit. That was great. Uh, <laughs> I love comedy KO. Oh, it's it's much it's better great. than heel KO. It's great. Um, I don't think Logan Paul walks out. United States. You champion. don't think so? I don't. Think I think so. he retains. I really don't think there's any reason to move the title, and I think he's. Uh, enough of a draw as a heel. I think people like him as a heel and want to see him continue. I just it really comes down to whether or not he has the time to continue on, yeah, defending the title though. And I don't know if he does or not, but I still feel like Logan with shenanigans, yeah. I just feel like if it's not Kevin Owens' time now, but, but I mean, for the U.S. championship though. I don't know. I mean, they're not going to give him the undisputed championship. They might eventually. Want not if to... they can't take it off of Roman Reigns. Well, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> just, just don't... It's possible, just don't... and that's right. And, you, know, you you could be right. You could be spot on. Um, but I'm going to stick with Logan for now. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. We'll see. We'll see once we get a little bit closer. <laughs> um, uh, moving on to the women's, the women's world champ, uh, the WWE Women's Championship. EO Sky versus Bailey. Um, and I think this is an easy Bailey wins turns face. But yeah, one hundred percent. Continues turning face. This this seems like the perfect fan service setup kind of match. Like we've yeah. been seeing this, her getting pummeled by the rest of her team that turned the back on her for weeks now. This seems like it's exactly what it's aiming at. Now, will she come out with the wacky waving arm flailing inflatable tube men? I will flip my lid with okay. joy if they do. <laughs> I will Poop on my couch. <laughs> um, I am peeing right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is, and I think it's a great match. I think, I think Eos, Eos, I hate calling her Eos guy. I know it's been like two years. Yeah, you're still on this. But <laughs> I've forgotten that they should even you, buy another name. Eo Shirai was just a cool name, <laughs> and now she's just some Japanese girl. Um, <laughs> Goldberg. Yeah, like Goldberg. Yeah. Um, Asuka. <laughs> I just think I think this is going to be a great match. Yeah. Um and and if they give them time, you know, and I think I'm good with them bringing back more Bailey. Mhm. You know, and having Bailey, I don't know. I we just and we've hated 
heel Bailey the whole time. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't been good. Mm -hmm. Um, Ding dong. Hello. (laughs) Goodbye. I think hate's a strong word. I think that's why we were using it. (laughs) I still liked her character. Yeah. Just, I prefer much more face Bailey. But fair enough. But you're right. She's been more annoying. She's filled the Vicky Guerrero role. Yeah. Yeah. Really well. Really well. Entertaining, but annoying at the same time. Yeah. Uh, The Women's World Championship, Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. Um, Who gets hurt first? (laughs) <laughs> uh i don't know because rhea ripley's already has had a wrist brace on for yeah three months now mm-hmm. um she's got to carpal tunnel just typing out letters to all her friends <laughs> um this is I, I don't know i don't know who's winning this match i becky is still the man i get this I think her storyline right now, though, is a, one of self-destruction. Yeah. Uh, I think this is leading to a loss for her and her having some sort of identity crisis. Okay. Uh, possibly taking time away, spend some time with her kid for a little while, and then coming back with a new vigor kind of thing, yeah. new, new mindset and focus. Uh, I think Ripley right now is one of the hottest acts going for wwe even yeah. as a heel she's getting massive pops every time she comes out or appears anywhere she insulted everybody on raw she insulted everybody on raw and they just laughed yeah they're like yeah we are kind of dumb they love, aren't we? <laughs> they love it they love her i don't think it's smart to take it off her right now i think she's i don't I think, think she's it's beyond smart. the judgment day I don't think it's smart. Um, and you're right. She's definitely beyond the judgment day. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't need them. They need her. Mm-hmm. I-, I think the only situation is if you were getting ready to make Becky Lynch just look strong. Yes. And that's possible. But it just doesn't feel like like she seems a bit unhinged. Yeah. Like yeah. desperate kind of unhinged. Not yeah. the it's my time kind of I'm ready for it and I've been chomping at the bit kind of unhinged. Yeah. And... I don't know. I just feel like that would be a mistake to take it off Rhea right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's the reason that I don't think Sami Zayn is going to be Gunther is because yeah. the only reason you have somebody be Gunther is to make them look really, really strong. And nobody, you don't want Sami Zayn to look strong. Right. I mean, like, he can be strong. That's fine. You don't need him to look strong. Right. You need, this, him to look, you need him to look like the guy that wears plaid pants and dances to ska music. And the scrappy Sami Zayn angle that they've been taking could work had they started it a month ago. Yeah. But, like, for two, three weeks leading up to it, no. Nah. How do we get well, back on that match? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, there is a six-pack tag championship match mm-hmm. um, for the undisputed tag team titles. Let's stop separating a title and then putting it back together and referring it to the undisputed. <laughs> like, let's stop doing that. It's the tag team championship. Yeah. <laughs> and I hate- I'm surprised they haven't unified them yet. Here's I feel the th- like that's been the plan yeah. for a while. Here's my problem. I hate the word undisputed anyway, because it means to not be contested. It's contested. They contest it every every week. All the time. That's All the exists. time. That's why it exists. Um, so I, and like, if everything's undisputed, then nothing's undisputed. That's my Everybody soapbox. has powers. <laughs> Everybody's special. No one. Then no one has power. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. Um, uh, anyway, so this one is uh, DIY Judgment Day. The Awesome Truth, which I cannot tell you how happy I am. The Awesome <laughs> Truth too. is back together. Me too. Um, right. New Day. And did we get the other two? So it's going to be either Legado del Fantasma or New Catch Republic. And then either Street Profits or Theory and Waller. A Town Down Under. A town down under. That's the name. Down. That's the name of the band. That's it's. That's the only thing I like about that. <laughs> we we put, I put on Raw the other day, and Hillary doesn't 
doesn't watch a lot with me anymore, but um, I put it on like before bed the other night and they both came out and she's like, I automatically do not like either one of them. <laughs> and they haven't even opened their mouths. They haven't done anything. They've just walked out. She's like, I don't like either one of these guys. <laughs> um, I... <sighs> Who's 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 taking on Austin? Who's taking on Theory and Waller? Street Profits. <sighs> See, there's a lot of ways this could. If Street Profits get in, I'd almost be willing to take them. I could see New Day winning. I could see DIY winning. Mm-hmm. I don't see Judgment Day winning. I don't see Judgment Day winning. I don't really see Awesome Truth winning. I don't think they need to win. They don't need to, but they're a comedy bit. But man, but also we have a lot of these like kind of newer teams, Legato del Fantasma, New yeah. Republic, uh, even Theory and Waller, all who could use some establishment. Yeah, like this DIY. Also, I mean, they're not a new team, but they are a new team for. They're back Robin. together after yeah. a long time, and uh, yeah. I I personally want DIY to win. I would love that. I think that would be a great start to a new run with tag team titles. But I mean, the tag team division is this pretty is good. good right now. This is good. I'd kind of be happy with a lot of these choices. I think so. I, I don't think there's a loss here. Yeah, I think I think this is this is really good stuff. And like I said, I think. I think you put the Street Profits in. Um, you put Legado del Fantasma. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think I think you've got some some good stuff. I, I like all of them. Uh, what is Angelo Dawkins wearing nowadays? <laughs> Whatever he wants. Who who did? It was like it was like, it was like somebody was like, "Hey, we got some of Mandy Rose's old clothes back here," <laughs> and. D'Angelo uh, Angelo Dawkins was like, bet. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all give me if I wear this out to the ring? <laughs> uh, who's going to tell him? Yeah, exactly. Like, this is not great. <laughs> um, before we get to kind of the biggest, I guess, match on here, we got a couple of non-title matches, which I love non-title matches. I also have the possible last match added. Okay. That's okay. Not official yet. Okay. Um, but we can talk. We'll do that here in a second. Um, I love non-title matches at WrestleMania mm-hmm. um, because otherwise it's just a night of champions. Right. That's all it is. Um, so first up, Jimmy Uso versus Jay Uso. Um, this could go a couple of different ways. Mm-hmm. Two specifically. Two. Yeah. <laughs> That's what a couple means. My wife's an English teacher, so I know. Um, I, I think that it's it's one of those. This was that match where the reason we have to change our answers the night before the second night. Yes, yeah. Because depending on where this match goes, it could drastically change our thoughts about the final match um, for WrestleMania 40 on night two. Yeah. This is um, the first four words of my answer are, this depends on the night. Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. depends on, and that was, I actually, I actually wrote that before and then I, I changed it. Um, I strongly believe because of my thoughts on uh, roads and roads and rains, I strongly believe that, um, would, <laughs> Which one's the good one? Jay. Jay. I think it's going to be Jay. Main event Jay Uso. Main event Jay Uso. I think it's going to be Jay. Um, I had to Google it, too. Yeah. I, my answer. Don't worry I don't remember. <laughs> the Yeet. I believe Yeet will win. Yeet wins. And no, we, no Yeet doesn't win. Um, but if Jimmy wins, then you're like, okay, well, maybe they're trying to keep the bloodline looking strong. Yeah. Man, maybe just to fool us. <laughs> For night two, mm-hmm. um, but if Jay loses or Jay wins, you're going okay. Well, the bloodline's starting to falter here. Um, maybe, maybe who knows? Maybe. So what I have is I, I think I think if it's on night one, Jay's going to win. Okay, taking Jimmy out for the night and leaving the bloodline one less enforcer in the tag match, giving Good. hope that Cody and Seth will win. 
But if it's on night two, I think Jimmy's going to win, giving fans doubt for the main event that Cody's going to win. Okay. Okay. That's what I think. Okay. 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 It'll be fun. It'll be a good match. Um, It'll be very hard to keep up with. (laughs) Please make sure they're Uh, wearing red and blue. Yeah. Everything. 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 (laughs) Maybe one of them wears like a, like a, like a, you put like a A mark on there. (laughs) Like a tell them apart. <laughs> um, uh, next, we have the match that I might be more excited about than any of the other matches: L.A. Knight versus A.J. Styles. Yeah, um, I think this is going to be an absolute barn burner. I, I've loved the buildup. I've loved the like. It's almost felt Attitude Era esque with L.A. Knight showing up at A.J. Styles' house. Oh yeah, <laughs> and all this kind of getting dragged away in cuffs. Like, I, yeah. That's some fun stuff. Um, Here's the problem. L.A. Knight is is still hyped. People still love him. Yeah. But we have made notice that he sounds a lot like The Rock. It's true. And it's hard to be a guy who sounds a lot like The Rock when The Rock is actively there all the time. That's true. (laughs) It's not just fans that have noticed. He's done voiceover work as The Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. done. He's done ADR for... Yeah. ADR. ADR there <laughs> for the rock there. Uh, I still think LA Knight wins, though. I think he I think, got the drive. I think LA Knight has to win, mm-hmm. or he's never going to get over. Mm-hmm. I think this is like the one shot he has to keep being over. Um, but I, th- I think this is going to be... I think this is going to be five stars. Mm-hmm. I think this might be the... Tech, from a technical perspective, I think it's going to be the best match of the night. Could be. Of the two nights. Um, very, very strong. So you have a, a one that's been added in. One that might be added in. One that might be it, added One in. of these two is likely going to be added in. Okay. It's either going to be, and I'm, I'm assuming this is going to happen on SmackDown this week, it's either going to be a women's tag team championship match, Asuka and Kari Sane versus Bianca Belair and Naomi. Okay. Um, or... It's going to be all of damage control versus Bianca, Naomi, and Jade Cargill. Okay. Uh, with no titles on the line, just beef. Just beef. Uh, That's a lot of beef. <laughs> still, I still think in either case, Bianca, Belair, and Naomi's side will win. But Jade Cargill's first appearance is going to be this SmackDown. Okay, yeah. Uh, 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 as an active roster. You, you're just... You're not oh, sleeping. You're so excited for this. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, but yeah, one of those two likely to be made uh, official this week. I I forget that the women's tag team titles exist. Right. And that's why I think Bianca and Naomi's side would win if it's a tag team championship yep. match because they're not doing much with it. And they immediately stopped doing anything with it. Those two would be fun with it. So, no, that could be good. Be cool. Okay, so now we're at the two matches that we have been building towards. Well, there's three technically. Are there we three? didn't talk. We didn't talk about Seth versus Drew yet. Oh, there are Seth versus Drew. Okay, yeah. so Seth versus Drew. I forgot that was even happening. Oh, that's not even on your list. <laughs> not even on my list. I forgot that was happening. Why is that not on my list? That's weird. Uh, Seth versus Drew. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's going to be good. Yeah, I think Drew wins. Okay. I think they've been having a lot of fun with Drew, uh, playing his new snarky Drew character. Mm-hmm. And Seth has been the only person to hold this title belt yeah. so far. So I think it's I think this fine. would be a good way to get Drew back kind of on the top. Yeah. And then they've already set the table for his first rivalry with CM Punk. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's an easy transition to get the belt on CM Punk. Yeah. Soon. I mean, wh- how else are we going to get 3MB back together? <laughs> this has got to happen, y'all. I got kids. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm pumped up for that match. Right. So we have now we have um the only this, two that we know specifically when they're happening. Yes. Yes. So night one, we're going to have uh The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. And the winner of that match gets to decide the stipulations for the match the next night. Yeah. Um 
I am very concerned that this is going to be a bum match. A bum match. A bum match. Like a bad one. Because because three of these guys have to wrestle the next night. <laughs> That's true. They weren't um, themselves. About. The Rock has not wrestled in <laughs> two years, three years. Maybe more than that. It's been a long time. Um, Seth Rollins again. He he has he has that match, and he's not going to put himself out for for that when he's got his World Heavyweight Championship match, right? Um, so we're not going to so, see him leave it on the line. I don't first night. I don't think so. I think the <laughs> Rock and Roman Reigns win, though. Absolutely. I don't see any other way of of doing it. I don't feel like they would tease Bloodline rules. Bloodline then, rules, man. And then not have that be the setup. I I almost threw a door just open. Continue on. I'll continue. All right. Well, while Matt goes and faces the intruders, <laughs> give you what I think. I let's talk about Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndolph. Um no, let's not do that. I okay, so here's the deal. I I just don't think that um, I, okay. Sorry. I hate, I hate, hate, hate. I almost threw my phone across the room when they started talking about the bloodline rules match, <laughs> because what are the bloodline rules match? Anything goes. <laughs> Do you know where else anything goes? And then anything goes. Almost every other match in WWE. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, John. I'm trying. <laughs> I, I hate it. It's again, we've talked about this before, but it's like a Texas death match. Like, nope, it's just it's just an extreme rules match. Just an extreme rules match in Texas. That's all it is. That's all it is. <laughs> um, you know, a Halloween fright match. <laughs> just an extreme rules match with pumpkins. That's that's all it is. You have to fight, you know, it'd be better. Like, it, here's the thing. And <laughs> I, I I tweeted this. I think it was it might be the last thing that I ever tweeted. Um, when we went to go see that show in Amarillo, mm-hmm. um, and they kept hyping up, uh, it was Amarillo uh, Street Fight, an Amarillo it? Street yeah. Fight, <laughs> and I tweeted out. I I said because um, it was Damian Priest versus AJ Styles, mm-hmm. and I said if one of these guys doesn't slap the other person with a seventy two ounce steak, it's not an Amarillo Street Fight. <laughs> It's just an any yeah, street fight. It's just an any other street fight. <laughs> if you got a Halloween fright match, the goal is you have to funnel candy corn into your opponent's mouth. <laughs> that's that's something different. But if you're just an anything goes match, it's an extreme rules match. Not different than any other thing. <laughs> you just put the name bloodline on it because yeah. <laughs> Because they want to say bloodline rules. Bloodline rules match. And, <laughs> unless, unless you are choking someone with a with a lay, that's what. That's the rule. We're gonna fight. We're gonna play dodgeball with lava rock. <laughs> that's it. Oh my god. Or like you know, the, you know, you gotta you gotta give the other person a tribal tattoo. That's there we go. You know, but User gets tattooed. I just, I just can't do that. I just can't do that. Um, so anyway, but, yeah, but yeah. Rock and Roman Reigns definitely going to win. They're going to make all the odds against Cody for oh, yeah. the final night. Um, so then moving on to night two, where you're going to have Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. Where, where are we falling on this? I mean, is what do we do if Cody Rhodes doesn't win? <sighs> Cry. <laughs> look, there's no way. Th- look, I understand. <laughs> there's only one reason why they would continue to keep the belt on Roman, and that's to also beat Bruno San Martino's reign, which would mean like a whole other year. I can't do this. Nobody wants it. Nobody, nobody wants it. 10% or less of wrestling fans want this to happen. <laughs> and, if you t- and if you take out all of the 15-year-olds, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> this is Cody Rhodes' time. It is one of the big, like, 10-year anniversary pay-per-views. It's the 40th one. 
they made it's a, XL. Yeah, they made a big deal at the thirtieth one with the fan service of uh, Daniel Bryan taking home the undisputed title. Yeah, this needs to happen here. If we end what could be the best WrestleMania of our lifetime with Cody Rhodes losing, that's all anybody's going to remember. Just how disappointed they are that Roman Reigns is still because who else is he going to fight besides The Rock who can't win the title because he's not going to be able to hold it forever unless he's going to take it and be even a more part time uh, <laughs> champion than the Roman Reigns is. I'm going to make another Fast and Furious. There is just no way, no way it's not Cody walking out. But I do assume it's going to be bloodline and rules. I'm going to assume that Seth has lost his match earlier in the same night and can't uh, be counted on to come and help. I'm going to assume that Jay is not going to be of any assistance. I'm going to assume that Rock is going to be on the sidelines along with Solo and along with Jimmy. And I think it needs to look like there's absolutely no chance on earth that Cody Rhodes could win, that he has not a friend in the world, that there is no one coming to the rescue, and somehow he's going to pull it out, whether that be entirely on his own or by The Rock turning on Roman to set up a Rock and Roman match, which is what they wanted to do originally. But either way, it's mostly going to be Cody, and it's going to be Cody winning. That's got to be how it happens. Or I flip the table and we Out. delete this podcast from ever existing. <laughs> We're done having a podcast. <laughs> We're going to end our friendship. Right. I don't even want to see you. Our be reminded friendship is on the line here, folks. <laughs> We're putting, you talk about careers. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I am, you know, I, I'm all that. I'm excited for this WrestleMania. It's going to be a blast. I am much more excited for this two night WrestleMania, which I hate two night WrestleManias. If I need to say that again, <laughs> whoever I need to talk to about this, I hate two night WrestleManias. <laughs> um, I, I think, I mean, again, yeah, like you're saying though, because all of these matches are great, they're pretty good. I, it doesn't feel like they're padding it to make it two nights like it has in some yeah uh, of these yeah like these all feel like we have to have all of these and we couldn't do them all in one night because it would be an eight hour pay per view yeah or now, each match would be ten minutes yeah these these matches better be longer too yeah because of that so um, well we're gonna be uh, giving our thoughts on all that um, and then we'll be back in a couple of weeks afterwards we will have our predictions up. Um, the night before night one, and then I would assume we'll kind of be on social media during the time. Yeah, John is usually on the Facebook page, and I I'm am. usually on the Twitter. So we'll we'll pop in our thoughts randomly. We won't be like actively live tweeting the whole thing, yeah. but Hashtag we'll, we'll pop in every now and then if you want to message us as well. Yeah, uh, on there. Hashtag any move. Uh, <laughs> but again, that's. Uh, I'll, I'm going to say it this time. You say it, and you better not mess it up. <laughs> At three words. <laughs> oh, dang it. Go ahead, John. <laughs> it's right here. At. It's right on the table. At two words, <laughs> LTN. Uh, that is any of our socials. That's Twitter. That's Facebook. That's Instagram. That's LinkedIn. I don't think we have either of those last two. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you automatically have Instagram if you, you have Facebook. I'm not sure because they're on those. My mine set up. I don't. I don't even have Instagram on my phone. I just post to Facebook and it goes to Instagram. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe we do. I don't know. I'm not the tech genius here. <laughs> um, I'm not the criminal mastermind. You are. <laughs> um, but we look forward. Come hang out with us. Uh, we're gonna be watching both nights, and uh, we'll we'll be back and we'll give our thoughts on the next episode on on how we thought it turned out. So, if we in, haven't deleted it. If we haven't, if we yeah. don't come back, you'll know that Cody lost. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> I will f I, no, I will burn Matt's house to the ground. <laughs> I will declare war like the Capulets and the Montagues. <laughs> anyway, oh, so I hope that doesn't happen because I like hanging out with Matt. Anyway, um, but until then, my name's John. His name's Matt. If you're not done with that, we got two words for you. 